Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to our program. The following presentation has no video and is intended to be listened to and enjoyed without the need to actually watch anything. So kick back and relax, or continue whatever you are doing and just enjoy listening to our story. Yesterday's weather was warm, almost spring-like. Now this morning, we're back to cold, windy, January of 1959 weather. The wind is from the east today. That means there's a wonderful spicy aroma drifting this way from Mama Looney's fine Italian restaurant. But I forgot, it's not called that anymore. Now that the sun has taken over the business, and that the times are changing. There are a few people going out to dinner in the evenings, but more families. So now it's called the Pasta Palace, family dining. Same great food, just a different atmosphere. Sonny, are you staying warm? You should be inside. Yes, Billy. I'm staying nice and warm. My wife Claire gave me an extra blanket. I need to talk to you, Billy. And here, take this. These didn't feel right to me, and Claire told me I needed to give them to you after she looked at them. Sonny handed me an old sock that looked and sounded like it had coins in it. I wasn't sure if I'd see you this morning. And if I didn't, Claire was going to bring them by your office. When she got done cleaning at the motel. They were tossed at me yesterday evening. I stayed out later last night because it was so nice out. Normally, I would have been inside. Sonny started to get up from his stoop, and I gave him a little bit of assistance. Oh, and one more thing, Billy. What's that, Sonny? Whoever tossed them was wearing shoes that were four sizes too big or something. They made a strange sound. You would know, Sonny. You may not have good eyes, but your hearing is top-notch. Sonny made his way inside his house, and I saw Frank watching me from his food stand up the block. As I approached, he had a coffee in one hand and a sandwich in the other. I asked if he saw anything unusual yesterday evening, and he said no. It must have been during his busy time, around 4.30 or 5.00. Or he probably would have noticed someone with big shoes. Most street performers don't show up until summer, but then there could be that one that just moved into the area. I paid for my food and coffee, and a little extra to keep an eye out for someone with big shoes that made a funny sound. When I entered the office, it smelled clean with a hint of coffee and sausage sandwich. It's much brighter in the office now, too, since the large window's been cleaned by my new secretary, Penny. Before this became an office, it was a hat store. So the old display window is rather large, and it faces south. I can see Frank's cart to the right. And if I lean into the window and look to my left, I can see Sonny's stoop. Penny was sitting at her desk reading the newspaper and eating. She looked up, chewed her food quickly, and took a drink of coffee. Good morning, Billy. These sausage patty sandwiches are really good. They remind me of Mama Looney's, I mean, the Pasta Palace's sausage sandwiches. Frank buys them from there at a discount, and Frank tells the customers, it's the Pasta Palace's secret recipe sausage. Penny, do you know anything about coins? I know a little bit. I'm not an expert. My grandfather and I would go through his collection and go through his coin books. He showed me how to check the quality by the wear and the difference between foreign coins and those minted in the United States. That's about all I know. I wouldn't be able to tell you the rarity or the going price. 
I held up the dirty sock full of coins. Penny scrunched up her face and gave me a funny look. Sonny gave me these. Someone tossed them to him yesterday evening. When we are done eating, we will look to see what they are. Penny finished her breakfast in a rush, dumped some coins on her desk, and started to go through them. I sat and ate my breakfast, thinking about what a person would look like wearing big shoes, and why. Penny, can you give me your two cents worth on what those coins are? Billy, that is exactly what they are. They are mostly mid to late 1800 two cent pieces. There are a few three nickel cent pieces, nothing over 90 to 95 years old. Well, except for a couple of late dated foreign coins. My grandfather said during hard times, people would hoard coins. That is one reason ration cards were made and paper 10 cent pieces. These might be part of the stolen antiquities collection. Look, it's here in today's paper. Yep. Sure enough, the article about the stolen coins from the museum was in the paper on the front page. Just above the photo of myself and the article about solving the case of Penny's father. My grandfather on my mother's side of the family donated some of his coin collection to this museum and a few other antiquities that he had collected over the years. He also sent some items to other museums around the United States. These could have been the same coins that I looked at with him when I was a child. I have two coins that he gave me from his collection before he donated all the others away. He didn't sell them to collectors? No. He said something. Money doesn't buy immortality, but kindness and a name card will. I didn't understand that until now. I'm going to go have a look around the museum. I know that I'm going to have to give Detective Eddie a call and tell him about these coins. Penny, could you start documenting those coins? So we know what is there. I will get right to it. One last thing, Penny. Are oversized shoes in fashion now? No, Billy. Not that I know of. Maybe if you're a clown? Or a thief? <laughs> or both? <laughs> I will keep my eye out for thieving clowns. Bye, Penny. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Great job on identifying the coins. And on the really clean window, too. Why, thank you, Billy. And you are very welcome. I drove to the museum. It's beyond the Pasta Palace on the other side of town to the east. I want to have a look at the renovations that are going on according to the paper when the theft happened. The paper said that during some of the cold weather we've had, the old water pipes broke and new pipes have to be put in, and the water damage is fixed. I located the museum curator and introduced myself. I was then able to gain access to the restricted area, where the coins were stolen from. It was within the renovation area. I talked with the foreman of the construction crew about the people he had working for him. He told me to go talk to the police, that he had given them a list of his employees. I noticed the cabinets that the coins and other antiquities were stolen from. It was broken, or just badly dismantled. The article in the paper had only talked about the coins. The curator gave me some information about other stolen items. I was sure to make a note of them and their description. I am guessing they only listed the coins in case they were passed into circulation within the community. That's when I heard a familiar voice, Detective Eddie. Billy, I'm really surprised to see you here. How are you doing? Darn, it's cold out there today. Are you looking for clues so you can find the coins and cash in on the reward? Hey there, Eddie. I didn't know there was a reward. 
It's just been posted. It will be in the evening paper. I went to the pawn shop when this first happened to have the owner keep an eye out for the coins. I stopped by the pawn shop for a second look just before coming here, and that place was hopping. Held the door while people were walking out to make more room for people going in. The owner said he was busy, and that was true, but he looked like he was walking on eggshells. He told me to come back later. Now I'm back here at the museum to check up on a few red flags that came up on some of the construction workers. So I'm going to question them. If you can come by my office tomorrow morning before you start your shift, I can give you my two cents worth and a few leads on your coins. It might make your workday go a whole lot easier. Billy, I'll be there at 6 a.m. I'll see you then, Eddie. Nothing more I can do here at the museum, so I'm going back to the office to get my notes ready for Eddie for the early meeting tomorrow morning. The wind was still blowing cold as ever. I really hope tomorrow is warmer. This weather makes me want to move somewhere tropical. I normally open up at 8 a.m. Heck, Frank isn't even open at 6 in the morning. He usually opens up just before 7. I'll just lock up the coins in my small lockbox I keep hidden in the filing cabinet. Getting out of my car at the office, I see someone all bundled up in a coat and winter hat circling around Sunny Stoop. I started to walk in that direction, and they quickly walked away. I strolled into the office, and Penny had placed the evening paper on my desk. On the front page, it announced a $200 reward for information leading to the return of the stolen coins. Looking at the paper, Billy, it looks like you will be receiving some bonus pay this week. I didn't find the coins. Sonny did. Penny, Detective Eddie will be here at 6 a.m. to pick up the coins, and I'm going to give him the information that I have on the case. Penny, can you be here at that time? Since I don't know anything about coins. It's also good to have another pair of eyes just for legal purposes. How is the cataloging of the coins coming along? I'm a little over half done, Billy. My grandfather taught me how to do this, too. He did it for insurance purposes. The museum will probably have the same paperwork, just in more detail. And what about the large shoes? Did you figure that one out yet? Penny just gave me a blank stare and got back to writing and looking at the coins. We both worked in silence in the quiet office. The clock ticking. The street light outside the window flickered on. We both finished work. I offered to drive Penny to the rooming house since my apartment is right next door because of the late time and the weather being as cold as it was. As we drove by Sunny Stoop, Penny noticed someone by it. I slowed down, and they ran off. I dropped Penny off at the rooming house and said I would meet her outside in the morning and take her to work. I did an extra drive around the block to see if I could see anyone suspicious. The town was quiet. The only thing moving around was the bits of paper the wind was blowing around in the streets. What a difference a night makes. Today was just opposite of what yesterday was like. It was warmer and the wind was not blowing. Penny and I walked to work to see if I could spot anyone hanging around Sunny Stoop. The morning streets were quiet and dark. With just the light of the street lamps lighting our way, it was a quick walk. I wish Frank was open because we could both use a cup of coffee. Penny, maybe we should get a hot plate for the office for early days or late nights. Then we can have hot coffee for ourselves, the customers, or if we have visitors. I really do like how professional the office is looking. 
Why, thank you, Billy. Well, good morning, Mr. Bernard Eddy. Don't call me that, Grouse Detective Eddy. You sound like my mother. Or the captain when he's mad. Good morning to you, Miss Baker. Detective Eddy, you can call me Penny. The two of them went over the documentation of the coins, and they were all accounted for. Billy, stop by the office and you can pick up your reward, and we can get a statement. You said you might have a lead, too. Yes, it's all here in these notes. You can look them over. You need to be getting to work. Someone in big shoes, huh? And someone hanging around Sonny's stoop? I will keep an eye out on that today. I will keep you informed. I need to get going. Bye, Billy. And you too, Penny. Later, Eddie. Bye, Eddie. As soon as I saw Frank and his cart show up, I ran across the street. I filled him in on the investigation and told him to keep an eye on Sonny Stoop. I bought two sweet rolls, two sandwiches, and two coffees. I took off my hat and he put the sandwiches and the rolls in it. And I held it between both hands while holding the coffees. Penny was watching from the window, and as I approached, she opened the door. I thanked her for getting the door. She thanked me for getting breakfast. The paper boy showed up, and Penny got the paper. Penny, are you looking for large shoes? <laughs> no, I was thinking about getting an apartment. I heard Mr. and Mrs. Codsworth talking about how the city doesn't want rooming houses anymore as it might bring in more crime and vagabonds. They also said they might just turn the upstairs rooms into one apartment. That wouldn't be too difficult for the Codsworths to do that. There's already a bathroom up there. They just need to put in a small kitchen and take out a few non-supporting walls. I started going over my notes of the antiquities stolen from the museum. From buttons to weapons... They seem so random. Ten items total, and easily carried by one person. By then it was lunchtime, and I stepped over to the window and looked out at the beautiful day. Frank was busy with a group of people in t-shirts and rolled up jean cuffs, with white socks, and... Penny, come here quick. What does that kid have on his feet? It's a type of sandal, Billy. I don't remember what the real name for them were. It started with a T or a Z something. They were a real hit with the soldiers. They called them flip-flops because of the sound they make. They are really nice to wear at the beach. How do you know that? Because my husband was a first lieutenant in the... Please excuse me, I need to go use the powder room. She excused herself to the small bathroom I have in the office. I did get the dripping faucet fixed. Her husband and mother both died in that accident about a month ago, caused by her father. So it's understandable she would still be upset about something like that. Sorry, Penny. Excuse me, but can you keep an eye on the office? I think the kid in those sandals is the thief. He's heading over to Sonny. I rushed out of the office. I slowed up, casually followed the kid, watching him from the opposite side of the street. I looked around and recognized the car park not too far from Sonny's stoop. It was Eddie's stakeout car. Sonny was sitting on his stoop as the kid approached and started yelling. That caught Detective Eddie's attention and Frank's. Eddie got out of his car and told the kid to freeze. The kid went to run across the road, and then he saw me. The kid then went to run in the only direction he could, and that was towards Frank. That didn't go well for the kid. 
Apparently, running in those flip-flop things are not like running in sneakers. He fell flat on his face. Caught himself a bad case of road rash from trying to break his fall with his bare hands, and the kid howled in pain. Eddie picked him up, cuffed him, and put him into his car, and off to the station they went. I walked back to the office. Now that was interesting. His hands are going to be sore for a while. The funny thing is, the same thing happened to me when I tried to run in them, but I was at the beach. I wonder where he got them from. I don't think they sell those in stores yet. <laughs> I'm really not sure if they're going to become popular for everyday use. You could get hurt wearing them. Penny went back to her desk and began going over some of the notes I collected from the museum. I went down to the station to give my statement and to pick up my reward. I split the reward money with Sonny, Frank, and Penny. Eddie gave me the information he had on the case. The kid had gotten a job as a gopher with the construction crew by his uncle because the kid was headed down the wrong road in a fast way and he just wanted to help him out. As for the shoes, they were his father's. The shoes had made it home from the war. His father didn't. And that concludes our story, Two Cents Worth, featuring Billy Nichols, Please Private comment. Investigator. Thank you for listening. Please comment, subscribe, turn on your notification bell so... You can make sure to catch our next episode. And now ends our broadcasting day. We're going to have to do a blooper reel. Something with fewer S's and P's. Yeah, we should do a blooper reel. Could you pass me my pop from the pasta palace and my spicy sausage sandwich?